Okay, I was at the beach the other day and I picked up these little shells. And today I'm going to see if we can do anything interesting with them. Now I keep calling these winkles, but they are in fact top shells. They're a different species. But uh, if I call them winkles again in the rest of the video, it's because they are very similar things. They are marine mollusks, marine snails. So anyway, I was down at the beach the other day trying to get some slow TV. And I'll talk more about what I was actually trying to do while we were down there. But there were lots and lots of these winkles on the shore. And now these, these are shellfish that people do sometimes eat. And I've eaten them before, but I wouldn't eat them from this beach because it's quite industrial. When they're alive, they're kind of nondescript little brown shells. But when they die and vacate the shell, the outer surface gets worn off and it reveals a quite beautiful layer of mother of pearl, of nacre underneath. And what I want to do today is see if we can actually polish these shells down so that we can reveal it all over. So I've got a couple of ideas for that. Firstly, I'm going to try sanding one of them, just gently sanding away the outer surface and see if we can just get the dirty bits off. And I've also got some distilled vinegar, so we're going to try etching it with that. The shells are made of calcium carbonate, but in two forms. There's regular calcium carbonate like calcite, which is quite readily dissolved by the vinegar or by acids. And there's aragonite, which is what the mother of pearl is made of. And that's more resistant, as I understand it, to etching. So we'll have a little bit of vinegar in one of these jars. I think probably the best kind of acid to do this with is hydrochloric, but I don't have any of that. So we're just going to put one of those in there in the acid and we'll leave that for half an hour or so and see what happens. Hopefully that will dissolve away just the calcium carbonate on the outside. I can see some bubbling going on in there. That's good. That hopefully means there is a reaction going on between the calcite and the vinegar, the acetic acid in the vinegar. So while that's cooking, I'm going to try abrading some of these. And so that I don't end up sanding my fingers, I think what we'll do is get a stick and one of these little sticky foam pads, which will help the, the abrasive to contour to fit the contours of the shell. And I'm going to cut a little piece of abrasive paper that's just the right size to fit that pad. I'm using 320 grit. I think that seems about the right place to start. I could go coarser than that, but I really don't want to remove too much of the shell. So I'm starting with 320. We'll see how we get on with that. I've got a variety of different grits here. So I've made myself a little sanding pad there. It's got a bit of give in the foam, which is good. And then to hold on to the shell, and again, I want to avoid sanding my fingers if I can help it really here. So um, here what we're going to do is just put a bit of insulating tape around the tips of these pliers. Let's just check in on this one while we're here. We'll give it a little rinse. see if it's working. Yeah, I think that could be working. Could be working, although it does seem to be dulling the surface a bit as well, but we'll keep going. So back into the, yep, that one's the vinegar. Back into the vinegar for a bit longer. So as I say, these shells are vacant. The organisms have died. In some cases, you can see there's a little hole where maybe a, a whelk or something has drilled into it and eaten it. And the way you can tell that actually is when they're alive, they have a little door called an operculum, which means in Latin little lid. And the snail uses that to close this opening really tightly. And it, it's like a little um, fingernail type material. And the snail pulls it shut into the hole there. And that prevents the snail drying out. And it also impedes predators and things from eating the snail. Right, so now we're just going to try just gently 
working on the surface of this shell, like this. Yeah, we definitely are getting through that outer layer of calcite and probably algae and things like that as well. And revealing, well, let's have a look. Yeah, look at that. We can see the really beautiful mother of pearl type of stuff under there. Now, as far as I know, these organisms don't produce this stuff for its natural beauty. They produce this material just because it's convenient and because it's durable. It's kind of a, I don't know, I suppose it's like a really strong and smooth material for them to live next to. I'm going to try with a slightly coarser abrasive now just to see if I can get these stubborn bits off. So all I'm going to do actually is I'll just put myself down in the corner here and we'll pop back up if there's anything interesting to see. I'll show you some of the footage that I took for the slow TV episode. I couldn't use it in the end because there's just too much wind noise there actually and that's really not pleasant to listen to on the video. So anyway as I say I was down at the beach there trying to capture some slow TV footage and it's quite an unpromising location you would think for finding tranquility. It's a an industrial setting, there's an oil refinery right across the water, there's a busy container port just upstream and there's also a big marina and a noisy go-kart track and other stuff like that nearby. And in fact there was quite a lot of industrial and human activity type of noise there. So it might seem a little bit counterproductive to be looking there for tranquility, which is what I generally aim for in my slow TV episodes. But it occurred to me, really, that there is a way of experiencing tranquility in the midst of all of that noise and chaos and uh, commotion. And really, it's just about realising that the noise is not yourself. So as you're sitting there, you can experience the noise of the ships and the machinery at the oil refinery and the go-karts whizzing around and people hammering away on their boats and so on and all of the noise of human activity that's going on there and machinery and so on but you can experience that and you can kind of acknowledge the fact that all of that noise all of that chaos and busyness and commotion and so on is not yourself it's it's happening outside of you and once you kind of realise that and accept that and hear it, it becomes almost like a contrast agent. And so not only do you realise that all of this noise is happening outside of yourself, but you kind of realise by contrast that within yourself there's a little haven of calm. And so it's quite possible in a very busy and noisy space to uh, experience calm and tranquility and I, I think it's it's actually quite useful to do that sometimes because we can't always go away and find a quiet spot but we usually can find somewhere that's noisy but there we go we are actually getting somewhere I'm not sure if I'm going to get these other little bits away here or not right anyway let's check on the vinegar the etching one again just dump it in there to rinse off some of the acid I would say the acid one is less successful. So there's the one we're grinding. It's a, yeah, the, the acid does appear to be dulling it a little bit. And that's the one we sanded down. But I suppose what's most remarkable about these little shells is the fact that they, they seem so nondescript when they're there on the shore. And yet, just underneath the surface is a, a really beautiful layer of pearlescent shell material. So 
So there we go. That's probably about as far as I'm going to try to take that today. It's really just an experiment to see what's underneath here. But these little shells really have got some potential, I think. Maybe I could cut some little pieces of this and use it for inlays or something like that. And as I say, I don't think the camera is really picking up all of the colours that I can see here with the naked eye. But isn't it amazing? But underneath that thin, dull surface, there's a beautiful gem waiting to be exposed. I think that's quite profound. So we're just going to etch that one in the acid for just a tiny bit longer, and then we'll compare that against the one we sanded. We'll see which one we think is the best result. OK, so here's the final result. So this is the one we sanded. I'll just put a little bit of water on there just to bring out the pearl essence. And that's pretty good, I would say. It could be dried out and sprayed with clear lacquer, and that would bring out the shine without needing water. This is the one we etched, and it's even better. Some really nice colours have come out in that shell. And again, as I say, I don't really think the camera is showing you everything I can see with my naked eye here. So I think that was a really interesting experiment, and I actually think that the acid etching is slightly better than the sanding. It's certainly easier. And these shells are really plentiful on the Solent shore and probably throughout the UK. If you're going to try this, then do make sure that the shell is vacant. Make sure there's no little door inside of there. There's no point killing the thing if you can pick up empty shells just as easily. So I hope that was interesting. I certainly enjoyed this experiment. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.